The Dene Nation, Cultural Analysis by Elizabeth Bauman, October 22, 2017. Table of Contents, Introduction, History, Social Status, Social Group Interactions, Value Orientation, Family Life, Healing Beliefs and Practices, Religion, Diet and Food, Recreation, Clothing, Language and Communication, Arts and Works Cited. Introduction to the Dene. Quote, in the past, the Dene of the five tribes were scattered because they lived on the land to make their living, and some still do. But as time changed, so did the lifestyle of the people. They began to feel the pressures from the developments surrounding them. So they decided to join and form an organization. That's how the Dene nation came to be. End quote. Elder Mary Wilson of Fort Good Hope, Denada. The Dene Nation is an Aboriginal people group who live in northern Canada. They are part of the Athapascan-speaking peoples of North America. The Dene Nation consists of five tribes, as seen in the diagram below. The Dene have a large territory, stretching from Alaska to the edges of Hudson's Bay. They can be found in northern Manitoba, northern Saskatchewan, northern Alberta, northern British Columbia, throughout Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. They call their land Denheda, which takes up approximately 1,000 square kilometers of the Arctic, subarctic, and northern boreal forests. Quote, Dene Nation. This land is also shared with the Métis, Cree, and Inuit nations. What will become apparent in this presentation is that everything comes back to the residential schools. Starting in 1880, First Nations children were forcefully taken from their families at around the age of six and placed in schools run by white Europeans, sponsored by the church and by the government. There, children were not allowed to speak their own language, dress according to tradition, or participate in any cultural expressions. Residential schooling lasted for over a hundred years, with the last one closing in 1996, but by that time generations of children had been brutally forced to abandon their culture. In fact, the residential schools were an attempt at cultural genocide, and today the Dene, like many other First Nations tribes, struggle to find their place between their traditional culture and the modern world. Many Dene are working hard to bring back their culture, and they are experimenting with a balance between traditional culture and the way they are living in the 20th century. These pictures show traditional Dene circle dances. These are the kind of cultural expression which were discouraged by the residential schools, the church, and the Canadian government. In this presentation of Dene culture, most of the topics covered can be divided into two distinct sections the way the Dene traditionally practiced that specific cultural expression, and the way they now practice that expression, which tends to be a mixture of traditional Dene culture and Canadian-European culture. Note about the pictures. Many of the photos in this presentation were taken by my father. They are of friends and acquaintances, so I ask that you please respect the people in the pictures and do not share the photos. The people in the pictures are real people, and we want to respect their rights. Thank you. Cultural expression number one, history. Quote, the treaties must not be forgotten. We must remind our children of this. End quote. Edward Okami, Thunderchild, First Nation. The history of the Dene Nation really has to start back 8,000 or even 12,000 years ago, when the ancestors of the Dene traveled from modern-day Russia across the Bering Strait and into modern-day Alaska. The Dene were hunters and gatherers, not staying in one place for very long. Their staple food was caribou, so they followed the herds in their migratory patterns. Because the Dene did not have a written language, the only things that are known about their culture before the Europeans came to North America is what is passed down through Dene legend and tradition, and what anthropologists, sociologists, and other scientists can deduce from historical evidence and the Dene people themselves. One of the first white men to come into contact with the Dene nation was Samuel Herrn. He was a Hudson's Bay Company explorer in the 1700s, and he became close friends with Mantelby, a Dene leader. Before the smallpox epidemic in the 1780s that ravished the Dene population, there were approximately 250,000 Dene living in Canada. 
sight and mis. Historically, the Dene were in conflict with the Inuit as well as the Cree, their closest neighbors to the north and south, respectively. Interesting fact. The government did not acknowledge that the Dene and Inuit were two separate nations until 1924. The European colonization of North America had a huge effect on the Dene nation. For one thing, the Europeans brought disease, including smallpox, measles, and influenza. These illnesses killed hundreds and thousands of Dene, devastating whole communities and leading to starvation and more death. The history of the Dene throughout the 1800s and 1900s consists of a series of Canadian government laws taking away rights, epidemics that killed hundreds and thousands of people, the discovery of metals, the establishment of mines on tribal property, Dene protests and RCMP involvement, unfair hunting laws, starvation, and residential schools. For more details, this website has a great timeline. Even after many Dene rights were taken away by the government of Canada and they began to live a more sedentary lifestyle, relying on government support, they continued to hunt and trap. The Dene were great hunters, and as the fur trade was very important in Canadian economy, the Dene were able to sell a lot of their fur. In the Northwest Territories, records show that in 1927, the production of raw fur reached $3 million, which is the equivalent to $40,920,677 today. In 1960, the Dene, along with all other Indians, became Canadian citizens, and discrimination became illegal, at least on paper, if not in practice. In 1968, the Dene became part of the National Indian Brotherhood, and two years later they received treaty rights under the name of the Indian Brotherhood of the Northwest Territories. For the next 20 years, they continued to fight for their rights and for the preservation of their land. In 1983, the Dene Nation took part in the First Minister's Conference in Ottawa, which defined Aboriginal rights in Canada, and they played a major role. They also were a big support in stalling, and eventually killing, the Lake Meech Accord in 1990. The Dene are strong and resilient people, and just as in the 1800s and early 1900s their rights were slowly taken away, in the late 1900s and early 20th century, 21st century they fought for them back. Showing great determination and persistence, they slowly gained their rights back, amended treaties, and had laws changed. Today, the Dene Nation is an acknowledged Aboriginal nation of Canada with its own rights and treaties. There are 37 Dene chiefs involved, representing the five Dene tribes and the communities, bands, and clans within those tribes. The chief of the entire Dene Nation is Bill Erasmus, first elected in 1987 and still in office today due to his strong leadership and dedication to the Dene Nation. Number 2. Social Status in Dene Culture Quote, it is important to respect our Dene elders because they are our teachers and keepers of our identity as Dene people. End quote. Chris Javier, English River First Nation. Traditionally, the Denisuline tribe, one of the five Dene tribes, functioned without a head of leadership or a chief. Communities were loosely organized, and because each person had a different set of abilities and skills, they did not feel it was necessary to give someone supreme leadership. Instead, leadership was dependent on skills and abilities. For example, if a man was a great hunter, he might be given leadership and organization of a big hunt. If, for some reason, there was a decision that needed to be made by one person, or if there was a need for overall leadership, the medicine men, or shamans, could fill that role. The Dene lived and worked with the survival of the community, or band, in mind. For many Dene, the focus was not on gaining individual status or rank, but on ensuring that there would be food the next day and that their children would not freeze in the winter. For this reason, most of the resources that might benefit the tribe were shared. A hunting party would consist of many men, and the meat they killed would be shared among all the members of the community. Food, clothing, tools, shelter, and all these things were shared as well because there was no logic in an individual withholding something to make themselves stronger but weakening the entire community. And for the Dene, it was the community that mattered. It was not just physical materials that were shared either. Wisdom, knowledge, and other lore was passed around. For example, what plants were good to eat, how to create drums, how to tell stories, how to track caribou, etc., 
It makes sense, then, why social status did not depend on education, wealth, or bloodline. Instead, individuals were given honor according to how well they performed their role in the community. A man who was a great warrior might be held in higher regard than a man who did not fight well. Elders were respected because of their age and wisdom, so in a way, they were higher status than others in the tribe. In Dene communities today, elders are still respected and sought after for their knowledge. Today, the Dene are organized into five tribes, with one chief in charge of them all. Currently, that chief is Bill Erasmus. Each of the five Dene tribes has one chief to represent their tribe, and then multiple chiefs under that one, leading separate communities. Each community has elders who are older, respected men and women. An elder is an official status today, but the respect given to them is something that has been happening in Dene culture for hundreds of years. Among the Dene today, people who are good hunters, respect the land, take care of their family, and give honor to the elders are held in high esteem. European influence has made it so that money and education play a role in social status, but because the Dene are not a materialistic culture, rank has more to do with how an individual lives than what they have. Part 3. Social Group Interactions Quote, The desolent people have their 